Make it simple, make it memorable, make it inviting to look at, make it fun to read. Leo Burnett. Hi guys, welcome back to the podcast. I am so delighted to have you here for another guest episode. Today I have Vanessa with me. She is a Google Ads expert and a website SEO expert. So we are going to be jumping into all things Google Ads today. Now I did want to point out that whilst we mention figures, numbers, conversion rates, etc. in this podcast, It really is something that you need to dig into with your business on a personal basis because what works for one person isn't going to necessarily work for another. So it is well worth having a conversation with somebody who is an expert in the field and getting a good idea on what might work for you, your business and your keywords. With that being said, let's jump into the show. We we have had some issues, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to tell you for real, real talk now. This is the third for attempt real. at getting this done. Um, we've had some recording issues. We had some um, timetabling issues, but we're here now and hopefully it's going to be third time's the charm, right, Vanessa? Absolutely. Third time lucky. We can do it. <laughs> okay, so... We are going to be talking about Google Ads today, Um, but before we jump into that, I would love it if you could tell the listeners a little bit about your background, how you ended up um, talking about Google Ads and helping people with their Google Ads. So I'm Vanessa from BFB Marketing, which is a small digital marketing consultancy based in Harpenden, and we specialize in SEO and Google Ads, so search engine marketing. So a lot of small businesses set up a website and um, and then it doesn't attract it get any traffic doesn't attract the right customers so it's really to attract the right people to your website and uh so that they buy ultimately and there's so many businesses as i said they've had a site possibly for years and it could also be attracting the wrong sort of people so it's just making sure that you can be found but you're also getting the right people to your website who will convert love that love that and it's so important i think for us to remember that our website and I talk to um, my audience all the time about how their website is their virtual shop window and so many Mm. people don't have like high street stores these days and with the wedding industry particular it's not something that we sort of have unless we're sort of a bridal salon or something so it Mm. is really important that your website is reflective of you as a company and I have to say there are still some really terrible websites <laughs> out there in the wedding market um because we're not experts in websites and even yeah. with you know the really easy to use wits and squarespace and dumper theme on blah 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 some people mm-hmm. really haven't upgraded since they first put their website out and and it really shows and yeah. so i think always a little bit of effort into your website is a great thing so So your company particularly deals with the SEO and then the Google ads working with the SEO to get people um, seen by the right people, which is awesome. Um, Mm -hmm. One of the things that I wanted to talk about was um, social media ads. So for me, I've done some Facebook ads. I've never done Google ads. To be honest with you, it scares the life out of me, but we'll come on to that mm-hmm. a bit later, I'm sure. Um, but I have run Facebook ads, so I thought it would be really good if you could kind of tell us what you see as being the main differences between the two, because I think a lot of people think, you know, they've seen the stats on how many billions of people are on Facebook, and it's like, well, my audience are bound to be there, so I should advertise yeah. on there. Mm -hmm. but then we forget that actually Google's like the biggest search engine in the world so surely that would be a better spot so if you could tell us the differences that would be fab yeah no I agree I think there are I mean people forget and you know I've talked about this I guess before that you know with digital marketing a lot of people think it's just you know social media but there's I've been in digital marketing for a long time and back in the day, you know, it was, it wasn't all about social media um, and it's grown exponentially, you know, it's, it's just exploded. And I think it's just because it's more 
relatable and it's it people feel it's easier to to manage that side of things mm. um whereas like you said google ads you know might feel a bit scary and and seo so you know there are over nine over eight and a half billion searches a day on google so you know i can guarantee you <laughs> there's going to be someone looking for your your service or your product so it's not to be underestimated but yes it can seem very daunting and very scary um there are lots of different differences between uh paid social ads and ppc ads or google ads so pay, ppc stands for pay per click ads um the main the main difference obviously is that they're two completely different platforms mm. so one is a search engine and the other one is a social media platform um and when you're on a search engine you can obviously bid on certain keywords so you're targeting a key a specific keyword so you would basically say i'd like to target these keywords that are relevant to my business that will attract my target audience to my website so you can choose those keywords that you want to bid on and on social media the targeting is mainly based on interest targeting or behavior targeting mm -hmm. so they are very different in terms of targeting options and that also feeds into, you know, your buyer, buyer's journey. So if you're targeting someone on a search engine um, based on a specific keyword, those people are obviously looking, actively looking for a specific thing, whatever that keyword might be, whether that's wedding photography in Hertfordshire, whatever that keyword is, you know, mm -hmm. they are at a different stage in the buyer's journey. Whereas on social media, typically, they're not actively necessarily looking for something. They, um, so you're sort of pushing your ad out to an audience that you think are relevant, which is great because you can obviously target your audience. Um, you can target a very relevant audience, but, you know, they might not be ready to buy at that point. So their mindset is slightly different. You know, they're on yeah. social media yeah. to have a little browse, have a little snoop and do, you know, lots of other things and scroll endlessly like I do <laughs> but you know on on Google on a search engine I mean they're just you know they've done potentially their research so again you can target them at different stages of the journey but um, typically you would target them based on you know they've done their research and they're ready to buy yeah. so the targeting is very different and then formats you know um, Facebook ads are very visual and generally speaking Facebook ads are cheaper but again, you know, it might take longer to convert. So ultimately, it really depends on your objectives. And it's just understanding what are you trying to achieve? You know, do you want to drive awareness? Do you want to generate sales? Do you want to promote a, a, um, an event or, or possibly a new product or a new service? So, you know, it just really boils down to what you're trying to achieve. And then you just figure out, you know, which is the right platform for me. Yeah, I... I love that you said that because for me, I haven't really thought about it like that. Like when somebody is on Facebook and they mm. search wedding photographer, they're mm -hmm. going to get hits just like they would on a search engine. However, the Facebook ads, you're not bidding on a keyword. You're looking for people who are engaged and not everybody puts their relationship status on Facebook. So you're likely to be missing yeah. a lot of people. And some Absolutely. people are engaged for like five years, 10 years, you know, infinitely engaged, never get married. So <laughs> you're still targeting people that might not want you. Whereas if you're targeting yes. the keyword wedding photographer on Google, then people mm -hmm. who are searching for wedding photographers are going to see your ad. So that is something that I think is just like, blown my mind a little bit because <laughs> I struggle you do and and personally for me I've struggled with targeting people on Facebook because mm -hmm. there's so little um information there for me to go on so for me being a b2b business like I'm searching for people who are in the wedding industry to become part of my membership and you mm -hmm. can't that wedding industry is not an industry according mm -hmm. to 
anybody else except for us lot that are in it, I think. Um, they don't, mm -hmm. it's not like manufacturing. It's not like retail. It's not the wedding industry. You know, it doesn't come like that. It's, it's there's photographers, there's yeah. bakers, there's caterers, there's musicians. So you've either got to kind of target all of those different things, which means that you are highly diluting your budget because it's trying to hit so many different people all at once. Yeah. Or you're not you're not getting the people because you can't target for it. But if you were mm. on um, Google, then you've got a different set of search terms there that you can look for. So it, instead of trying to find the people in the industry, I can mm. look for people who are searching for help with my wedding business. Yeah. And then I'm going to get the people. So that's like that's completely blown my mind and yeah for everybody listening like it's whatever your business is you can perhaps mm. target the people who are interested in the area that you work in but they're not necessarily searching for you and therefore don't necessarily want to buy from you so I yeah. love the idea of um google ads being your your part of your sales funnel in that respect yeah. of it's part of the buyer's journey and your social mm -hmm. ads being more brand awareness and making people know aware that you're there um yeah that I I think is is a good combination so thank you for that Vanessa <laughs> golden nuggets there. love it when we get golden nuggets guys <laughs> you got it oh no, it's quite hard to, it is quite hard to get your head around you know if you don't do it day in day out and if you haven't done google ads before yeah. and um you know i think a lot of people just are, are a little bit daunted by the whole setup process and everything else and then it can be quite expensive i think that's the other thing but whichever platform you choose you still have to invest enough to be able to find your audience optimize on an ongoing basis so when I set up Google ads campaigns and paid search you know I do paid social as well but if I set those up you know I don't just you know they don't just I just don't just leave them I don't just let them run and that's it you know they have to be managed on an ongoing basis and like I said you have to make sure you've invested enough to be able to test what's working find your audience um and then optimize um to just make sure that you are you are reaching your objectives yeah so that's that, it takes time for sure so when it comes to google ads it's a little bit different mm. to social because on social we we're putting up instagram size images and facebook size images and we're putting out images that we can put text over mm. what what is the ad setup on google because i think a lot of people just don't even know the basics of Google ads and what they actually look like and what you can do with them. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, you can get different formats, but the main ones, so when you're going to, if you go to Google and put in a keyword, wedding photographer, you can either, depending on what you're offering. So if you're a product-based business, you would typically run a shopping ad. You might run text ads, but the shopping ads are the visual image ads at the top at the top of the page which show the product so yeah. you would not you would use a product feed for those um and it pull through the images from your website but if you're a service-based business you would typically run a text ad which is literally just text you know you would create the ad so you have full control over the ad copy um but those are the two main formats so either sort of the shopping ads which are very image heavy and are very enticing so they get really good click-throughs um and then the text ads you can also run banner ads or display ads they're called which normally run on different third-party websites or partner sites but again and also on youtube um and other places so you can run video ads and and banner ads which are more image heavy focused yeah. um but i wouldn't do that i wouldn't recommend doing that if you're just starting out because it could spend a lot or it couldn't really generate uh, sort of conversions or sales or inquiries so mm. it's sort of if you've got extra budget that's probably worth investing in into but that's it is again more from an awareness point of view or from a retargeting point of view so you could run those but I wouldn't do that to to begin with yeah 
So talking about the cost, and I know it's like how long is a piece of string kind of figures, but if yeah. we were to decide to set up a Google ad for our business, we're wanting to get people through into our funnel, you know, mm-hmm. what, what would we be looking at as a good benchmark for the amount of money that we would need to put into it and the length of time we would need the ad to run to kind of see results. Like, well, you know, I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> no, this is really, I mean, there's no easy answer because I'm just going to say depends, which is just not a great, it's not a great answer. Probably not what you want to hear. But, you know, it is, it does depend. It depends on whether you're product based, service based, business. It depends on what your objectives are. It depends on, what you're trying to achieve at the end of the day and so the way it typically works is you pay per click so it again based on the industry the cost per click can vary so it can vary massively from you know 50p a click to five pound a click so there is there is a big variance depending on um your your sector um but you would base basically so if you were a service-based business you were trying to drive leads or inquiries you would just work backwards from the number of inquiries that you wanted to achieve on a monthly basis, for example. So if you were, um, if the cost per click on average was a pound and you invested 500 pounds a month, that would buy you 500 clicks. And then it depends on your sort of average conversion rate. So not all of those 500 clicks are going to convert into an inquiry. I mean, it'd be amazing if it did. So yeah. only a small, <laughs> only a certain percentage. And of are those... there industry averages on those kind of things? Because I know with like open rates on emails, there's a there's an industry sort of standard for percentage. Is is there with with you? If somebody came to you, would you be able to say, okay, in your industry, the average conversion is there's certain industries where it's really high. So it's legal or financial. Mm. Um, or tech for example sectors but um, the rest I would say yes there are sort of averages but I would I would normally go into um, the platform and basically look at certain keywords that that client would want to bid on and then yeah. it would give me it would give me those sort of figures it would say this is, your, this is your mm. roughly your average cost per click for that keyword but again um, yeah so you could basically use that as for your modeling forecasting um to see you know how many how many clicks it would buy your budget would buy you mm. um but it's it's best to sort of get it up and running and also test it because obviously every keyword's different but yeah. on average i would say you know typically you'd be spending sort of around a pound one pound fifty and then you would just work backwards from that so how many inquiries do you want to generate based on your conversion rate how many um com- how many inquiries would you get from those number of clicks so if you were to invest five hundred pounds, for example, and you got five hundred clicks based on a one pound cost per click, and your conversion rate was one percent, you know you'd get five inquiries a month, which isn't a huge amount. On a five percent conversion rate, it would be twenty five inquiries a month. So it just depends how the conversion rate, you know, how high or low that is, and how effective your website is. You know, if you're driving really good tra- traffic to your website how well does your how how well does your website then convert those people you know is it really clear what you want those people to do um so you can create landing pages to make sure that you convert those people better mm. so there's lots of different things to sort of take into consideration yeah but, definitely um, i would always work i would always work backwards from what is your target you know what do you what what do you want to what do you need to achieve yeah I think it's something to remember as well. And you see like the shopping ads and that's going to be for um, people that are going to be doing sort of generating the volume. They want lots Mm. of people to buy their thing. Whereas in the wedding industry, you're looking at a service that has a a lot higher cost than those shopping ads will have more likely. So you're Mm. not looking for volume, you're looking for the quality, the smaller amount, because you can convert Mm. that smaller amount and it's going to be a bigger um, 
pound amount for you in the back end there if you convert them. So as long as you're doing yes. that, I think it's very important what you said there to do the landing pages specifically for your ad because you can then really make it enticing for them to actually give you their information and convert them to a lead. And as long yes. as your funnel works all the way from then getting them as a lead to actually following up with them, getting in front of them, having a meeting with them and converting them to a sale then yeah. it may cost you a pound two pound per click you may only get five leads from that a month but if you can convert one of those leads you spent mm. 500 pound to get a 2000 pound order mm. that might well be Absolutely. worth it for you so I think it's really important to actually play with those numbers and work with somebody like Vanessa who understands <laughs> um, what it's all about so that you can do that working backwards and that modeling, because you might actually find that for you, that mm. works better. And when you're doing the Google ad, do you just do you just target one keyword with an ad or do you put multiple? Oh, in? no, you'd have a whole. I mean, you would depending on your again on your budget, um, but you would target a number of lots of keywords. So, okay. again, depends on your and depends on your business. Um, so if you are an e-commerce business, you you would need to target a lot more keywords if you're running um, search ads. But yeah, as a as a as a service based business, you would you could start with a small number of keywords and make sure that they're the really highly highly targeted keywords. But yeah, you would definitely have a number of keywords per ad group. Okay, and so if somebody was going to come to you, and I, I just I just want to sort of. Get us, get us down to to some sort of figure. Um, if somebody mm. was going to come to you and say, "I have this ad budget," yeah. At what point would you say that's not going to be enough? It's not worth starting with that. So, where's kind of the this is kind of the minimum amount you want to start with to try to test it to 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 have a look and see if it's going to work for you. Yeah, I mean, that is really hard to say, because I think if you're happy to bring in five inquiries a month based on a 5% conversion rate, then you could start there, you know, you could, but that would be, you know, again, <laughs> again, it was, it would start, I mean, I would basically say if you're happy with a small number of conversions and you think you can convert them to a high value booking, then you could start to sort of, you know, build, walk it up from, you know, 100, 200 pound investment a month. Mm. But, you know, I would just have to be realistic that you have to um, stick with it and you have to run the campaigns for at least three months. You know, you yeah. can't just sort of. That was what I was going to ask as well. Yeah, I, the length of yes. a campaign because it's different because yeah. Facebook tends to behave a lot quicker. So what I've seen with mine is I did an advert not long ago it was a hundred pound advert and I did it a hundred pound budget, should I say? And I did it for 18 ish days and I mm -hmm. got 62 leads out of that, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. was fantastic. But it's because of the type of ad that it was. And mm -hmm. I could see that quicker with Facebook, but I think with Google, you need to give it that, that little bit more of a longevity to actually start seeing the results and play with it, like you were saying, to analyze it and just make sure that you're targeting the right keywords and that the, the leads that are coming through and the types of leads that you want. So I think yeah. that's important. I think it is the type of leads because if you're just getting email addresses, you know, that's a different lead to, so people signing up to a newsletter or signing up for an event, that is a very different lead to someone inquiring about your business and a, yeah. and a specific service, you know, that they're hopefully going to go on to book. Yeah. So, you know, and depending on your competitors and depending on how you compare price wise to to those, you know, because they're going to be other people bidding on on ads they are going to be, you know, a lot of competitors in every given any given sector. So you've got to look at how you compare to those and, um, you know, that could impact how many people inquire and do you, you know, to what extent you put or do you put your price on your landing page, for example, so it's it it depends on what you're trying to sell, the value of what you're trying to sell, and you know how good an inquiry. If that's a really high quality inquiry, which typically it is, that will convert to a booking, mm. then obviously that's worth the investment. So that is your return on ad spend, which is also called ROAS. So 
you can then work backwards to say, what is my ideal um, sort of target ROAS? So how much can I invest? If I'm going to see the returns, it's definitely worth it. Then you don't really need to, you know, it doesn't matter how much you then invest if you're getting the returns at the end. Yeah. So that's why you have to let it run for long enough and you need to just understand your audience. It's like, faith, you know, it's the same with meta ads. You do need to understand your audience and find the people who are going to convert and that are the best quality sort of conversions or inquiries. Um, so that's why you have to sort of allow enough time for that to bed in. And that is the same with meta ads. You do need mm. to allow, you know, normally enough time to sort of find your audience that yeah. that will convert. But yeah, it is it is important to just have that three month period to set up the campaigns and let them run. Um, but it is, you know, some keywords might not convert. So then you have to pause them. And some keywords might do really well, or they might get to the page, but not inquire. Then you have to, then you have to optimize your landing page further. So there are just lots of different factors to to consider. Um, but it 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 is very effective in in converting. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. Lovely. Okay, so I've got one little bonus question for you. Um, and this is because I see it in my inbox often. And I think other people who've got Google accounts probably see it in their inbox often. And it is, yeah. this, you know, Google sending you £400 of free Google ads when you spend £400 on Google ads. And I always sort of look at it and I, not that I think that it's it's a scam because I know it's coming from Google. So I know it's fine. But yeah. is it I don't know. It just doesn't feel like, you know, what are they, <laughs> What do you mean they're going to give me 400? Is it worth doing that if we were going to um, decide to give Google ads a try and we've got that email? Is it worth mm. going through that and, and getting that extra 400 pounds? Uh, I I assume that it is like you know an eight hundred pound budget get better than a four hundred pound budget. Yeah, no, no, it's it's definitely um, it's it's definitely legit, and it, you know you I've, you can definitely use it, and it's definitely helpful. I think you need to invest more beyond that, ideally. Um, I mean, for clients, if for clients who it work, you know, when it works, it works, and you keep you, then you just keep the Google ads running. But this is a really, this is basically Google's way of getting new, new uh, customers on board, especially smaller businesses who don't have massive budgets. So it, it's you can use it. You've just got to have a promo code. Just make sure that you have a promo code when you, when you're applying, and then you, so you put that promo code on in the back end, and then once you've spent the four hundred pounds. Um, they will then match that. So you have got a total of eight hundred pounds um, to spend once you've spent the initial amount. So it it, it gives you a little bit more flexibility and freedom budget wise um, to test further. Um, and you know, ideally, you would keep them running beyond that. Yeah. And Facebook or Meta ads are a bit more tactical, so you can do you can sort of switch them on and off more often. Google ads you would typically ideally leave them running if they're working because they're bringing in the business, they're bringing in either, you know, the sales or the inquiries that, that yeah. you need on an yeah. ongoing basis rather than sort of running a specific promo campaign, which you can do very um, tactically and sort of short-lived on, on, um, on Facebook. But yeah, it's, it's, it's valid. And if you get one, then, then use it, I think. Yeah. Oh, I love that. And I think that's really good. And I think what I've sort of gleaned from today's conversation is that, you know, it's not one is better than the other, but they can be used in different ways to kind mm -hmm. of target your audience. And even where I said, you know, awareness on Facebook, but sales on Google is not completely true because you just said there that actually when you've got a promotion running, that Facebook mm -hmm. is, you know, because I think it just it works. You can't target as well but it mm -hmm. works a little quicker. So it, you still need like Facebook say you need like three days or something for the ad to start running and actually sort of find its feet. So don't just do a three day ad because it, you won't get much result. Um, so um, I think it works a little bit quicker. So for those promotion purposes, Facebook would be a good way, but for your long term, you know, 
funneling in people on a consistent basis, Google is the way to go. And I think that yeah. it's it's a really good overview of Google Ads. So I want to thank you so much, Vanessa, for coming on and sharing Google Ads with us. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> it's been it's been a good conversation and we've done it. Yes. Good. Yes. But before we <laughs> sign off, I would love it if you would tell people where they can find you. So if they're interested in running Google Ads, where can they get hold of you? Yeah, so my website is vfpmarketing.com so you can book an appointment with me on online. Um or you can find me on Instagram or Facebook. I'm more on Instagram or Facebook, so under VFP Marketing. Um yeah, so you can get in touch either way, just DM me or you know, get in touch, email me, Vanessa at vfbmarketing.com, and we can just have a chat. So yeah. <laughs> Fabulous. I will have all of those details in the show notes for you guys so you can head over there to find all that information and connect with Vanessa. Thank you again, Vanessa, for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Until next Thank week. You. Bye for now.